I used to actually fish for barbel. And as soon as I collected this and cleaned it up, I realized it looked very similar. So let's look, go through it. Okay, it's slightly different because we've got enameled scales and the barbel's got really thin scales. Um, it's got teeth in its jaw and it's not really underslung like a barbel. And again, with barbels coming off of that, we, we don't know if this one had it or not. It's got a, um, and bearing in mind, this is now crushed flat as well. So it's not quite how the fish would be in life. You've got a very sort of long, delicate petrol fin, and a really broad dorsal fin, and a quite a sort of, although the fluke of the tail is missing here, it's rotted off. It's got quite a sort of powerful tail. But you can see it's got a long sloping sort of forehead here with a, an eye right at the sort of top of the fish. And other than that, it's, it's, its similarities are really quite the same. My sort of interest is, okay, it's living in the sea, was it living on the sort of sea floor? If so, you know, a barbel normally lives in, in fresh water with really strong currents, then it's glued along to the sort of riverbed. Now this is in the sea, and it, where we found it in the Kimmeridge clay, it's in a sort of marine environment where it's pretty static and sterile, so there's no sort of strong currents or whatever. So is this doing the same job? Probably not, or has this one come from another area where it could be in a high energy environment and actually died and then drifted across the sea and here's where it sort of landed and got fossilized the only other thing is with that we've got another specimen from the same locality and the same horizon so that's probably not the same so it's it's probably doing a different job but all i can say is that the, the shape of this fish is is very similar to a modern barbel now you talk about convergent evolution. This is, a, as I say, a similar fish to a sort of barbel, but this is a marine fish. Now, what you've got to remember as well, seal accounts, that, long, that fish that was long thought extinct, existed once in fresh water, then they moved actually into salt water. So it, it's, it's quite an interesting concept. But the, th the thing is with this, all I'm going through is the similarities to a sort of modern barbel. You can't say it's the same or whatever, but that's the only thing I can go through. But because it's completely new to science, no one's yet really described it. It's a long shot, and it's certainly not an ancestor to one of those, but when we're studying fossil material, we have to look to sort of modern material to get a comparison of what these animals are doing. And it's interesting because it's the same with uh, squid, fossil squid, we have to look to modern squid to get an idea of what they're feeding on or their habits and goodness knows what to get an idea of what they're doing in ancient sort of life. The other thing is what we've done with this, we've actually CAT scanned it and across here, underneath here, underneath all these the scales and bone and goodness knows what, is a series of like canals all joined together and it looks like some sort of sensory aid to the fish. Now what that is we really don't know because again this fish is completely new to science. This is the same species of fish although it's incomplete but what this shows you is something different preserved. So you've got the same long wispy pectoral fin, the skull is a little bit different because this one's been sort of crushed over a bit more and it's obscured this sort of eye which you can see on here. But what's really interesting if you're studying sort of fossil fish is this area here where actually the scales the overlying scales have actually just erupted and blown off. And what you've got is the internal. So you can see the vertebral column here, and you can see how it's composed of what we call hemivertebrae. In other words, the vertebrae is not one element, it's actually in two halves. And you can see details of the ribs and everything else. Now, if you're studying fish, that's what you're really looking for. Something that tells you a little bit more about the makeup of the fish. Um, but I've not since, found any more of these things. Now the inter the only other interesting thing is on the termination of the sort of, or the petrol fin up the top here, which goes in the body, it's got a hook on it. And in the past, people have found those as a separate element. Now they're quite common. So these fish are quite numerous, but the other thing is that no one up to date has actually found anything complete. So these two are really, really interesting in the sense that we've got more information locked into these two specimens than we've got currently in any other museum.